Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to master graph theory for coding interviews. So a lot of people have trouble in graph theory and they have a lot of difficulty in solving graph problems. But let me tell you it is very easy to solve graph problems, it is very easy to go into graph theory as long as you have the correct approach. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can go into graph theory and master it and crack your coding interviews. Also this video is a part of my placement preparation playlist which is all about how to crack your dream placement. I'll give a link in the description, it'll also appear on the corner card. So do check it out and let's get to the video. So like I said, graph is one of the most important topic that is required for cracking the coding interviews. Almost in every good company, around one problem, one or more problem is asked of graph, okay? So step number one is learning the necessary algorithms. So the most important thing is DFS and BFS, depth first search and breadth first search. If you don't know depth first search or breadth first search, you'll have a very hard time cracking the top interviews, cracking the interviews of top companies. So you need to know DFS and BFS. So these are the two most algo important algorithms. Apart from that, you have some classic algorithms like Dijkstra, Floyd, Bellman, Ford. So you need to learn all of this theory wise. Okay. So this is the mistake that a lot of people do. They don't focus on the theory. They go directly into code. So I want you to take a bit of time out for theory. Okay. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to learn DFS theory wise. You're going to learn BFS theory wise. So you might ask where to learn these things. So the best resource for this is Abdul Bari. Okay. So for learning the theory of depth first search and breadth, uh, breadth first search, just go to Abdul Bari's YouTube channel. He has a video on DFS. He has a video on BFS. Watch both of them. And I want you to be clear with the theory part of how depth first search is actually working. So if you have a set of notes, how is it working? If you have a set of notes, how DFS is working, how BFS is working, you need to be very crystal clear with the theory part before moving on to the code. Okay, so you need to learn the theory. Now, after you learn the theory, to hammer the point home, you need to use a visualizer. Okay, so I want you to use a visualizer. So it's a tool in which you can see how algorithms happen, how algorithms take place. So I'll give a link to this tool visualizer. It's completely free and it's online. So what it'll do is it'll create a bunch of nodes. And uh, if you say DFS, then it'll show you how DFS is running. So if this node is connected, then this node is connected. So it will actually show you how DFS is happening, how BFS is happening in real time. Okay, so use a visualizer to understand very clearly how depth first search, how breadth first search actually takes place, okay? So I'll give a link to it in the description, it's free of course, use this visualizer and after that you'll be crystal clear with the working of both DFS and BFS, okay? Once the theory is done, and I want you to take out a bit of time for theory because it is very important that you're clear with the concepts, okay? Once the theory is done, the next part is learning the implementation of both DFS, BFS and the other algorithms. So for learning the implementation, this is what you're going to do. First, you're going to get the code of both DFS and BFS. So for getting the code, you can use Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks has code of almost every data structure and algorithm. So you can use code from Geeks for Geeks. Now, after you get the code, this is what I want you to do. Okay, and this is very important. Focus on this part. So I want you, <clears throat> so I want you to write the code in a notebook, not in a compiler, not in a code editor. I want you to write the code in a notebook. Okay. So write the code in a notebook. So write the code in a notebook and then I want you to dry run the code. Meaning that I want you to create a set of nodes and then I want you to run each line of code and then see what happens. So on one page of the notebook have the code and on the other page of the notebook have the test case, have the number of nodes. And then run the code in your mind and see what is happening in the uh, paper in the notebook okay so dry run the code in your notebook see how it's working and i want you to be clear with each and every line of the code okay so whatever is there in the code you should understand what each and every line of it is doing so if you have depth first search i want you to understand how the recursion is working if you have breadth first search i want you to understand how the queue is working so you should be clear with every line of code okay that's why i want you to dry run your code before you actually go on to run it on a compiler or a ide after you're done dry running the code, then you can see on a compiler code editor and then whatever code you've learned, store it in a Google Doc. Store it in one place, either on a Google Doc, either on Notion, either on GitHub, it doesn't matter, but store it someplace, okay? I want you to store all the code in one place so that you can refer to this just before going into the interviews, okay? Okay, now theory is done and the implementation is done, the code is done. Now the most important part 
that is solving problems okay so knowing the theory and knowing the code was very important so that you can actually understand what is happening in the problems okay now while solving problems there's two things so there's two types of problems one is the classic problems that you will find on lead code so they have a very simple state problem statement like do a topological sort do a depth first search do a breadth first search traverse a tree things like that so they are very straightforward they are classic problems okay so the classic problems you'll find on lead code and geeks for geeks okay so solve classic problems on lead code just go on lead code search graph problems and solve them again go on geeks go geeks for geeks search graph problems and solve them now if you're not able to solve the problem then obviously read the tutorial or find a video tutorial and then see what you were missing on okay so in case you're not able to solve the problem read the tutorial that is not an issue but do try to solve as many as you can okay so these are the classic problems next are the word problems so these problems are more story type they're not like a generic statement they're not like simple straightforward statement like do this do that they have a story like if you see in code forces or code chef in the context you'll have a story that there's a kingdom the cities the city is connected the city is connected to this the city is connected to this and essentially it's a graph problem but it's termed as a story problem so it's very important that you do these type of problems as well because what happens that a lot of people face trouble in word problems even if they are good with classic problem so solve a lot of word problems where will you get the word problems code forces and code chef so even in this focus on code forces more go on code forces and search graph problems you'll get some and try to solve at least 10 to 15 here and on lead code try to solve as many as you can okay because because majority of the problems in interviews are taken from either lead code or geeks or geeks and majority of the problems from in the coding round are generally some or the other way similar to code forces contest or code chef contest okay so the two type of problems classic problems solve them on lead code and geeks or geeks other type of problems word problems or story based problems solve them on code forces and code chef and that's pretty much it with these three simple steps your graph theory is complete and you don't need to be worried of graphs anymore okay so again to summarize learn the theory dfs and bfs is very important okay and one more thing if you want to learn the code then i have also made videos on dfs and bfs i'll also link them down i've made code on both of them you can see that as well or you can just get it from geeks for geeks so learn the theory visualize how it's working get the code dry run the code understand the code store the code in a google doc solve problems solve classic problems and solve word problems these are the only three things that you need to do in order to become a master of graph theory and crack your dream company. So I'll be making more videos like this on every data structure and every algorithm. And uh, I'll be making more videos on DSA. So do subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And thank you.